evening and welcome back to the first time home buyer show i'm your host sd class and as you know we have absolutely amazing content coming to you live every night this week we have zaman tungwa kumalo on your screens at 7 p.m with the private property podcast if you haven't seen that yet please head on over to our facebook page or youtube and catch that insightful information from Zama's show and of course Mbali with the farming and agriculture podcast every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. if you're ready to dip your fingers into farming and getting that land you need to watch Mbali at 8 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday last but not least is Chad Viveros with the home shopper show that's every Monday night and Friday at 8 p.m. Chad travels around South Africa and views absolutely amazing property mansions apartments that are for sale if you're ready to buy and make that first investment this is a show you do not want to miss and without further ado I'm sitting with the absolutely amazing Torai Jack entrepreneurship author property mogul the list is endless good evening TJ how are you Esther how are you I'm very well thanks and uh, welcome to everyone else who's watching us and uh, greetings to your viewers what is TJ doing to ensure that there is going to be a legacy left behind. Oh, dude, there's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, where do I start from? Um, mm. So, there's a great book that I like to read very often. And within this book, it says that if you're to leave a legacy, your legacy should surpass the third generation from you. Right. So, where's the third generation? So I'm number one, my, my kids are number two, their mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. is number three. So what am I doing to ensure that the legacy surpass them? Mm -hmm. Not touch them, surpass, mm -hmm. right? So number one, I, now that I'm in business, I have structured things, and when I say structure, I just didn't go out and buy a house, Yeah. right? I've also ensured that when I'm buying my house, where is it sitting? Who owns that house? So ST, I don't own anything, mm. right? Um, my trust owns everything. Mm. So the house stays within the trust. So if ever I die, SARS is never going to touch anything in my estate mm. because it's in the trust. Right. So the trust is going to live for a longer time right. on the terms that I've put in. Mm. Not on the terms that my kids have put in or their kids, but oh, on my terms. Yeah. So I am crafting the generation. It's intentional. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, I've got a business. Within this business, I don't own anything. I control everything. Control is power, Viva. Mm. <laughs> um, and with that, mm. everything again sits within my trust. trust. And whatever that is happening within the business, when I die, it's going to continue within the same path of that mm. generation. So when I started doing property the correct way, I then started doing, I started researching, what can I do which is, that's intentional, that can help me to get to my goal? Mm. What's my goal? Legacy. But how do you do it? Mm. What is the practical? How do you move from one step to the next step to the next step? And you know, when I talk about all these trusts and whatnot, a lot of people then want to go out there, create the structures, ha, ha, ha. Five years they've got the structures, nothing has happened. Mm. I'm the reverse. Mm. I actually started having structures not so long ago. Yeah. So I'm a doer. So I'm like, let's do it. So I started buying, buying, buying. And then somewhere along the line, my legal team was like, you got a problem. Yeah. You're talking about creating legacy, but the way you're doing business, it doesn't do it. Mm. Uh, it you won't get there. Yeah. What's going to happen is that if you die, SAS is going to come in, and there's an estate, yeah. they're going to take X percentage, is that what you want? I'm like, hell no. Mm. But how can we do it? They educated me on how to do it. And then I started implementing it whilst I'm in the game. Mm. So we speak about people going back into, go through for conferences, go, th go read books, mm. um, attend um, whatever podcasts and you know, get information to grow you. Mm. I'm anti that, mm. right? I, I preach it, but I'm anti that as well. You might be saying, TJ, but you're contradicting yourself. Yeah. Learn, mm. take action. Okay. Right, because if you're just learning, you're just an information junkie, that's yeah. what you are. Now being information junkie, what are you gonna do? 
at the bride, you are the guys who are like, you know, you can do property like this. Mm. Okay, how many do you have? Mm. Nothing. Nothing, yeah. But you have all the information in the world. But you haven't applied any of that. Or experience it. And I'm also all for real lived experiences. How can you talk about something if you haven't experienced it yourself? 100%. So from creating my legacy, Esteem, mm. it's about putting the structures in place. It's about leaving them now whilst mm. I'm still alive. Um, and over and above that, um, within our business that's called the M5 Property uh, Addicts, we have actually created a school, right. which is called the M5 Property Varsity. And within there, I take time every quarter, whatever I've learned, we put it in there as a yeah. course, and anyone who's out there, they will come in and they'll learn. Mm. My view is that that won't die. Maybe the processes might change, but the foundation, the principles of mm -hmm. how you can buy a property the correct way and things like that, that won't die. So anyone else out there who's wanting to do it the correct way or the TJ way, mm. they can go and learn. And my view is that it's creating a greater legacy. I've got a community uh, and within that community people come in and we plug in and besides just creating a camaraderie we're always talking about property mm. and the, the other thing that I've done I've, I've written a book yeah you know so that was actually one of my questions sorry to cut you off TJ is about yeah. how are you giving back to the youth yeah. and you just you just answered my question is that you keep you need to keep recycling knowledge hundred right? percent um, you know, so for some of the stuff that I learn, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a trained change management person. So I look at complex stuff mm. and I, it works in my head and I'm like, put it out there in the simplest manner. Mm. That's how I'm trained. And with that, SD, I look at some concepts in the US, in the UK and things like that. And when I was starting off, I was looking at those things. I'm like, does these things apply in I, South Africa? Yeah. And yes, they do, but maybe the naming is just different. The principles are the same. Yeah. So with that, wherever I am, whether I'm at a conference, I'm talking to you now, I really like to take some of those things that are making other people win. Mm. And how can I just dilute it into a digestible manner right. to my grandmother? Yeah. Is it Einstein that says, if you can't explain it to a five-year-old, you don't know it well enough? That's it. <laughs> yeah. And that's exactly what you're doing. And you spoke briefly, but just before we go to the book, yeah, uh, this is the first time home buyer show, and I want to talk about your first home. I want to talk about the first time you did this. No, let's not talk about that. No, come on, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it bad? Was it a fun experience? Was it? I think it's so important because, like I mentioned, we have a lot of young viewers who come in and tune into the show. Right. And to hear from a property mogul himself is right. so it's educational and it, it's we can avoid making similar mistakes well look um st i think for me mm. uh, i was i was in love at the time i'm still am in love right mm. now and um my then girlfriend who is now my wife um, she had bought one or two properties on her own mm -hmm. i had done the same but we didn't have a house. We we're just about to get married, but we yeah. didn't. We didn't have a house. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think you know, there's plenty of people that are like that out there. Mm. So I want to talk about that house. Sure. Because I think that was our first house um, between my wife and I, and we went right round searching for properties, and we had a budget, mm -hmm. and that budget was an amount that the bank had given us to say that we qualify for X. Right. But we, didn't, we never looked back into, but what can we afford, mm. right? And, and I think that was the biggest mistake. Mm. So we went with what the bank can give us and we started looking at areas. So let's look at a million rand. Right. And we said, we want to stay in the north and everybody wants to stay in the north. Yeah. And we looked at pricings and we're like, oh, a million rand would give us a two bed. Mm. Then we started looking into different areas and in a different area, a million rand was giving you a four bed. Right. So we're like, no, hold on. Mm. Let's get more space because we want to have kids. Yeah, we know that a family. we want, yes. Yeah. 
And there we are, um, we changed our mindset from the north. I was like, I'm still like the north, mm -hmm. uh, but my wife was anti the north. Um, so we ended up having a compromise in where we stay and which was kind of like in the northwest. Mm -hmm. um, and we bought a place mm -hmm. for a million rand. However, I think this is where the lesson comes through for me. Yeah. We bought a house and that house, we used to call it the red house. Mm -hmm. I didn't like it. It's the house that I now stay in. Yeah. And basically we bought it on the basis of does it fit what our basic needs in mm. and what we are going to do in the next five to ten years. Right. So we've been in that house for ten years. That house is saved as well. Yeah. However, let's go back. Mm. Could we afford the house? At the time. At the time, yes. Mm. With what I know now, no. Okay. Right? Um, was the bank wrong to give us one million? Mm -hmm. No, they're not. Yeah. The bank sells money. Right. That's their job, yeah. to sell money. So for that reason, they give you the top part based on regulations. Mm -hmm. And if you are to take that, what happens if my wife get retrenched? Right. What happens if I get retrenched? So we never looked at those dynamics. Mm -hmm. Had we done that, I honestly think that we could have gone for a 500, 100,000 hand, you know, looking at the benchmark of, of, course. of, of a million rand. Mm. Why am I saying that, especially with what I know now, is because I would have looked at the mitigations of if my wife gets retrenched. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I got retrenched three times also staying in the house. Wow. Right. So this is real life. Mm. Right. But whilst we're talking about that, ST, the, the thing that we then want to jump in to say, it's, it has saved us well in, in the last 10 years, but when we bought it, what was the purpose? Mm. So here's the thing. We don't understand, or should I say, at that time, I didn't understand. Right. Asset and liabilities. Yeah. Basically put, assets needs to put money in your pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what an asset is. Mm -hmm. And liabilities is something that's taking, taking money out. Exactly. So when we bought this house, immediately became a liability and it still is my biggest liability mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. hey tj you've bought this property 10 years ago so it's not really it is because it's taking money out of my pocket yeah right now with what i know now st i could pause and say i qualified for a million rand could we have with what i know now could we have bought in a different area, yeah. maybe further west, maybe mm. east, maybe south, I don't know. Mm. But what could have a million rand given us mm -hmm. to create an asset? Okay. With what I know now today. Yeah. yeah. Because with what I know now today, ST, I've got my, some of my students, they actually live in a property for free. Mm. So they go out there, they buy the property. But because the property comes with more living space than the, what they are using, yeah. they're still using the one million. But maybe they've got a cottage, another cottage, that cottage is 5,000, that one is 5,000. It's paying the bond, yeah. so they don't pay the pay, bond. Yeah. But they're staying in the property. Or potentially they're the ones staying in the cottage and someone else is it's in the in main the property, route. Yeah. So with what I know now, I think I would have really gone through that option. Mm. And I'm like, why didn't I do that? Mm. But I did buy that first property. We still live in it now. Mm -hmm. A beautiful house. It has really become a good home for us. We've changed a whole lot of things to make it um, fit for purpose for us, yeah. comfortable for us and our kids. Uh, one of my kids got uh, some allergies and things like that. Mm. So we've made that home to be like that. Yeah. However, ST, with what I know now, and the reason why I'm emphasizing on the fact with what I know now yeah. is before you do mm. buy your first property kind of like go out there and find the education right why are you buying this property it's not just about living in it mm. it's not about it's the red house like mm. it was for me mm. it's not about it's closer to my transport to go to work yeah for me when i now look at a house like okay fine now now that where i am where i am mm. my next house st is is about, I want a house where I can go in, it's got my office, it's got a wing of my office because I want to work at home, it's a choice. Yeah. But my business is going to pay for that rent. 
That's number one, right? Mm. So I can write that off. Yeah. Number two, I also want to have a place where I can stay in a very nice, secured environment, but I want to have a wing so that when my partners are traveling through from wherever they are coming through, they, have... they, stay, with, they stay with me. Yeah. Why am I doing that? I want to create a symbiotic relationship with my partners. Exactly. Right? Uh, but they, they will have to pay for it, mm. whether it's an Airbnb formula or whatnot. Yeah. But the point is that I am crafting intentionally the next house and how I want to do it mm. to make sure that it's not a liability mm. for me. That's it, yeah. That's it. Mm. I like that. Yo, there was so much information that you just gave me and came at the very right time in my life, TJ. Let me, let me tell you that. <laughs> um, let's move to... to the book, let's, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the book. I, I read it briefly and I want to talk about, you've told us a lot about your journey and how you got to where you are. Right. And, you know, the, the book, I think, obviously explains, I mean, the title is From Bad Debt to Property Mogul in Two Years. Yeah. Let's, so, so let's talk about that journey. I mean, two years is a very short time to be in bad debt and then become a property mogul no, like it's a, that. It's a long time. Is that a long time? Bad. It's a long time. <laughs> um, I've got a, one of my friends who's called mm. Joey Evans, and uh, Joey Evans is a, is a he finished the Dakar race, mm. and he says, "TJ, when you have fallen off a bike, mm. and you're not so sure whether you've been hurt, you can't breathe for like a few seconds, but it feels like a year to get that grasp right. of, of, of 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 air. So it really depends on which side of the fence you're sitting on." Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the book, I think that it was just me pouring out my heart mm. on the fact that if I can do it, I'm of the view that I live in the same South Africa, yeah. anyone else can do it. So the book is really written from a perspective of this is who I am from Tarai Anon, mm. son of the Anon. Mm and who has no backup, who has no foundation, and who is coming in into the system right. of being employed, who is wanting more, who loses money, mm. and how do you get out of that? And from there, when you have to partner up with people, it's an open secret. Mm. I've never like all these businesses that I've got and the, the, the properties that I've got, I've never put any of my own money in it, Esther. Yeah. It's all other people's money. Yeah. I've got a certain skill that I've got. And within that certain skill, people come to me and say, TJ, here's a million rand. Here's 500,000. We want to get involved with what you're doing. Yeah. So that's my skill. But what's your skill? Mm. Right? What's your thing? Right? So if you have to figure that out, the rest in terms of how you can win mm. is pretty simple. Easy, yeah. Right? And the book, I've written it that way so that whoever you are out there, you can then replicate the secret sauce. Mm. Right? It's, it's a recipe that I've given you, and you can go out there, implement it, and make it win in your own mm. area. It's not about property only. Exactly. And I think that's so important is what is your thing? Finding out what, what your skill is, what you can bring to the table. Because earlier you gave an example of there, were, there was a time where you couldn't put money in as an investment, but you could put your skill yeah. down as an investment. You know, yeah. Not everything holds monetary value to it. So find out what your thing is. And I think that's what I want the viewers to go home with tonight, but I'm not done. Um, there's so much I want to talk to you about. You won Investor of the Year, right? Yes. And I wanted to find out, and after this I have one more question, yeah. which is completely off topic. <laughs> but uh, you won Investor of the Year, and you've told us your story in depth, and I want to know what that prize means for you, and the sacrifices that went into being the Investor of the Year. Um, yeah, so... Investor of the Year, I think it's not even about Investor of the Year. Any accolade that's going to come through, um, it's something that you're probably not expecting. I wasn't expecting it. Um, and uh, for me, Investor of the Year was, was quite 
it, it came at the right time. And the reason why I say that ASD is because at that time I was still trying to figure out do I leave my job or do I continue running the business as a side hustle? Mm. And then I got nominated. Mm. But I got nominated also. And this was something a lot of people don't know this, but people within my clique does. Mm. And I got nominated along people that had trained me. Oh, wow. So when I got nominated, I got a shock. Mm. I'm like, well, this is great. And I think I'm going to stand at the nomination because the guys that have trained me, they're going to win because mm -hmm. they've been in the game for longer. Yeah. And then on the night, I get to win it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> but the whole came from a very humble space, mm -hmm. Esti. With the fact that, number one, I was being recognized with fellow people that practice what I do. Right. And with the fact that they were recognizing me, they also understand all the struggles of getting to where I was mm -hmm. on that day. And also, number two is winning such kind of an award, it's not a, it's not a competition, but it's just recognition. Mm. And for me, what it did for me at that time, I was ready to resign. Mm -hmm. And over and above being ready to resign, I was ready to take on a bigger challenge mm. because I realized at the time that my peers were seeing that I'm doing great. Exactly. But I wasn't. Mm. And I then it gave me, you know, that stepping stone on like, dude, you're amazing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so I get that step, I'm like, I'm amazing. But I'm like, no, but last week I wasn't. And mm. this week I am. So I'm like, but how best can I be more amazing? Mm. The following week. And, and I realized that mm. amazing is only amazing at that time when you have achieved it, but it's gone. Mm. But what's the next thing now? Right. So, so in my core team, uh, there's two ways that we're always talking about, ASD. Well, that I talk about. Mm. Um, what is the next thing? Right. We have achieved the way we have achieved right now. Mm. But what's the next thing? Because you can't live in your past successes. Hey, we built, we built a complex, yay. Mm. We bought a 10 million rand building, yay. Okay. What is the next? But thing? what is the next thing? Yeah. Our life grows by taking the next step. And the moment we stop taking that next step, we stop. And for me, the book is the book. I've written it. I'm, I'm very proud that it's going out there. It's helping other people to get into the next step. I get lots of emails, many uh, texts, and people that have started buying properties in their own. Yeah. In small towns, people, small towns I've never been. Mm. And that's, an, that's another bigger win, as close as winning the investor of the year. Right. I've helped someone that I don't know. Mm. I might never meet them, but their families mm. have been impacted with what I've done. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's for me that's the biggest win. Yeah. Yeah. It's a priceless one. And I I enjoyed that. Um, but going forward, ST, I am taking this more intentional. Mm -hmm. So I I am actually creating a click of people where we can drive to bigger goals together. Mm -hmm. It's intentional. We meet regularly. We are pushing our own boundaries. Yeah. Your boundary ST could be one property today. Yeah. Can we push it together? Get you into a one. And yeah. tomorrow, can we get you into a five? Right. Because you've overcome boundary number one. Mm. And and that's that's me in a nutshell, ST. Mm. I was gonna ask you a completely different question, but yeah. you gave me an amazing question. So for TJ, yeah. last question. What is the next thing? <laughs> <laughs> When I came into when I came into property, I was trying to find a way to get out of debt. Mm -hmm. And property worked for me in two ways. But it didn't work in multiple ways. Yeah. The first one was it worked for me because when you buy a property SD, if you're buying in the correct manner, in the right way, the government from a tax perspective, 
they can pay you. Mm -hmm. Instead of being an employee and you pay the government, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not anti the government. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that understand the rules of the game. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Put more money in your pocket. So that's number one. Number two, you, the moment you buy properties, you're buying correctly, you get what is called equity. Mm. So you're getting, for some of my properties, this building that we're sitting on, we bought it for 11 million, mm. the value is 16 million. So by just buying it, I bought 4 million. Right. So I'm 4 million richer mm. before I bought it. Mm. There is no any other asset that does that for you. Yeah. Right? So what does it mean? It means that, and, and, and I think don't be scared with the numbers. We can take these numbers to as low as possible to say, I bought a two bed, one bath for 160,000, mm. but it's worth 500. Mm. The difference there Already, yeah. is your equity. So for me, Esti, when I looked at property, I said, it can give me more money. It might not be hard cash on the table, mm. but it's money it's, on my balance sheet. Yeah. So I am getting more money by working as opposed to if you are exchanging your time for job for a job mm. and you're getting paid the value is different so in terms of growing your legacy if you're exchanging your time here but if you are buying assets here how soon can you get there mm. so for me here it makes sense in the property space and above that i can have tenants on top of it yeah and they pay me regularly and out of that I have food on the table. Mm. Yeah. And there was something so powerful you said to me just before the show about the system. And I said, we need to change the system. What yeah. did you say? <laughs> there is no system. <laughs> there is no system. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the whole thing about the system, SD, is mm. that my, my view, and, and this is a Torah, you, you can call this a Torah right. thing. Uh, the system is you. Mm. Right. And we, we live in South Africa, and I, I just want to be as, as blank as I can, and to the point. We live in South Africa, it's a multiracial country. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my wife is mixed, so I've been exposed to both black, white, Indian, colored, you name it. Mm. Some of my business partners are within that space. Um, I am, the way I'm trained, and the way my, my head works, I observe people. Mm. And when I observe, I, I, I start bringing in the stuff out. It's a, it's, a, it's a good skill and it's a bad skill. Yeah. Now, with that, SD, if you're really looking at a system, we can look at apartheid as a system. Mm -hmm. It is a system, mm -hmm. right? We, we long past apartheid. But the system of apartheid still, still lives. lives. Yeah. However, it is a choice to then live within that system. Mm -hmm. Why do I say that? I choose to have Jewish friends today. It's a choice. Mm. I choose to have white business partners. It's a choice. I choose to have friends from Cameroon. It's a choice. Mm. From Ghana. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, how do you have that? Hey, you're on social media all the time. Why don't you DM them? Yeah. Right? Why is it a choice for me? It is a choice for me because I can understand who they are. Hey, you guys, you're on the Jewish thingy. Why are you having a bar mitzvah? What's a bar mitzvah? Tell me. Mm. They tell you, uh, oh, okay, 21, you give someone else what, what, what. Mm. Okay, nobody ever did that to me. So can I now create my own bar mitzvah? Yeah. I can for my child. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's a plant that I've been... Yeah. Seed, it's a yeah. seed that's been now planted in my head that right. I can go implement tomorrow, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But if you're only in your circle mm. of where you grew up and where you are, it is that only thing that you all grow up and understand, that's what you're going to know. So for me, the system is you. Mm. You are the system. And you decide what you want to do. You decide you have the choices to define those, that system. And you have the choice to bracket. Right. 
apart totally mm. right and create another one mm. if you want yeah so the next thing for me is is that um when i came into the um property business it was solving a problem and that problem was getting me out of debt and um when you buy properties it gives you a couple of things which is number 1 um you earn equity you know you buy the property and also you've got a business on top where you can rent out the property and things like that but for me i've achieved this now i can do this i can buy properties good deals in my sleep i can figure it out boom we gone mm. the really next big thing for me is that we're figuring all of this est property for me it's a vehicle mm. to get away, to 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 get where i want to get to mm. so as a vehicle my vehicle doesn't just work on its own it's working as i buy it's giving me money it's working as it lives on it's giving me more money but now there is a business that's on top of that and this is the business that i'm after so the next big thing for me is now st is i've already created multiple businesses out of this student accommodation we run that very well and the aquaponics we do what is called aquaponics it's a farming system that we do and we're doing that and then the other part is our no more tenanting that we do but as the big thing now is scaling this i've scaled it mm. i mean we've got 300 students 200 uh, tenants uh, 42 employees mm. i've scaled it from a guy who's coming as an underdog yeah but i can scale it bigger the big thing for me is to is there is people out there who are like me yeah who knows that they can do it but they just don't know how right the big thing for me is i've actually started putting up a program together where people like me who have the hunger they can do this they don't know how we're putting all of this together mm. for one year we run together mm. but for me it's not just about running to create the business there's more to it yeah there's the family to it there's the you improving you yeah there's the running of the business but i don't want people who are going to come in and they're going to struggle in terms of how do they manage student accommodation how do they all of those things i've already got them mm. now it's about can i create a community of people that are understand the mission of creating a legacy mm. that understand the fact that they want to create a business for mm. themselves it's not my business it's their business yeah. and that understand that they can do more right and that's what that's the next big thing for me because not only will i will i be able to teach and give but i'll be creating a force est mm. of like minded people who are going into business stronger in the head financially stronger with that i think we can change the face of south africa mm. or even africa who knows the world yeah <laughs> thank you so much tj and that's exactly where i want to close it off and to the viewers at home i have a question what choices are you making to keep fulfilling to keep fulfilling yourself with knowledge and educating yourselves to be in different circles or just let's think about the choices we're making and that's how we leave you this evening at the first time home by a show i've been st classen and this is to ride jack also known as tj thank you so boom, much boom. see you guys okay. again next week same time same place take care